Hey everyone, how's it going? Lightning here, and as per tradition, I wanted to wish all of you a very happy new year. Um, I hope that all of you had a wonderful holiday, and I hope that you're all doing well. So this is uh, the first time I've done one of these, I guess, in a couple years, I suppose. Uh, I was going to do one last year, and my heart wasn't in it. <laughs> Um, for kind of obvious reasons, let's be honest here. Uh, but this year, I'm going to kind of do a bit of a life update, and then, I don't know, we're just going to kind of talk about things and just go from here and just have a general discussion. Hello, Lacey, that's my cat. You probably just heard her just now, the little chingling bell. Anyway, so, <laughs> crazy couple of years, huh? Um, I hope that you guys have been weathering the storm that we're going through. Um, I hope that everyone is okay. I hope everyone is healthy. Um, I hope that you're aware you are safe and loved, and I wish nothing but the best for all of you. And if you have suffered losses through this whole thing, I'm so sorry. And I just don't even know what to say. It's just... It's been rough, and I understand. So, let's talk about, uh, life. Everybody's favorite topic right now. Um, so the last time I recorded one of these, I was rather optimistic, if I recall. I actually can't remember if I was optimistic or not. Uh, going into 2019, uh, actually, no, 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 no. It was going into 2020 from 2019. Ah, oh, sweet summer child, you had no idea. Um, I believe Cece and I recorded that one together, a uh, Christian cosplayer who's normally with me on these uh, things, but we actually haven't seen each other in the better part of six, seven months now, and before that we hadn't seen each other for a year and a half, so again, for obvious reasons. I'm trying not to say the thing because I don't know how restrictive YouTube is on talking about the thing. Also, my cat is pawing at the door. Okay, now that she's out and living her best life, let's get back to the topic at hand. So, yeah, I'm not really going to address the thing by name. Uh, we'll just say that we all know what we're talking about here. And <laughs> go from there, because again, I don't know how strict YouTube's being on this whole thing. Um, and I don't really want my first upload in the better part of two years to get taken down immediately. So, uh, I remember at the time I was quite worried about the COPA regulations that were being enforced at the start of 2020. Um, and I wasn't exactly sure if I could keep doing what I was doing. Nothing really came from that. That unfortunately turned out to be the, uh, I don't know, the lesser of evils for 2020. I, looking back, really wish that was the biggest thing to deal with that year, but of course it wasn't. Um, but I had promised, well, I hadn't, I don't know, I never really said I promised, but it was heavily implied that I was working on a project, a Let's Play, um, of Pokemon Heart Gold. Um, or did, was it Soul Silver? I don't remember. Um, point is, that never happened, obviously, and I was like, oh, we're going to try to get it out by sometime in 2020. Well, here we are, heading into 2022, and that never happened. Um, I... Don't really know what to say on that one. Uh, we had family visiting that holiday, and I was super preoccupied by that, in a good way, for the most part. Um, and things just kind of got away from me, and by the time I was able to work on it again, I wasn't really thrilled with any of the work I put into it looking at it again, and I was like, there's got to be a, way, a better way to show off this game and explore this narrative I wanted to tell, and then I was like, well, does anyone even really care about this narrative I want to tell? And it's like, does anyone care about a story within a game? That's... Eh, I don't know. It basically, I, I'm not going to say I scrapped it, but it, it's scrapped-ish. <laughs> so, um, and then unfortunately my grandmother got relatively sick during the spring and summer months of 2020, not from the thing, but from, uh, she had actually fallen and, uh, hit her head pretty hard. Uh, 
when she was visiting. Um, she was fine at the time, or so we thought, but um, she refused to go to the emergency room because stubbornness runs in the family. Uh, but it turns out that uh, she had a bit of, of a pretty traumatic injury going on up there. Um, I don't want to say too much because it's not really my story to talk about. Um, and we weren't really sure what was going to happen with that, but luckily, against all odds, and genuinely speaking, it is an actual miracle, uh, none of the doctors expected the complete and utter turnaround that she did. But boy, did she turn around. Um, and she's actually still with us today, so, which is something that none of the doctors would, uh, would have predicted, so we're really glad that that happened. Uh, that she's still here, not that, you know, she fell and got hurt in the first place, but... Um, if that had to happen, at least we got the better end result. Um, by the time fall of 2020 had rolled around, I was like, okay, I really gotta try to preoccupy myself. I'm constantly anxious. The world's falling apart. The thing is running rampant. I'm scared of getting it. I'm scared of my family getting it. Um, so let's make a Let's Play. And then I tried doing Majora's Mask, which is... I thought doing Majora's Mask was a good idea at the time. I thought because I was feeling depressed and sad, and everyone else was feeling depressed and sad, that we could explore those emotions together through a relatively depressing game. And let's just say I, that was not a good idea. That, oof, that was not a good plan. Um, so I decided to scrap that one, because every time I went to record it, it, I just didn't have it in me. And right now, I still don't have it in me. So... I love Majora's Mask, but I've just not been able to bring myself to play any super depressing games as of late. With one exception, and I'll maybe talk about it at some point. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm just going to talk. I haven't talked to you guys in a while. Um, I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, so let's see. That brings us, I guess, towards the holidays of 2020. And I have never been super fond of the holidays. Uh, they kind of have some bad memories for me. Uh, so going into the holidays of 2020, it was uh, no different, and then some, because of the thing. Uh, by that point, I had not seen any of my friends since January, and I had not seen my father in a full year at that point. Uh, the last time I had seen him was Christmas Eve of 2019, by that point. Um, he... Because my mother and I are disabled, um, when he had his uh, surgery a few years ago, 2018, I believe, um, his recovery didn't exactly go to plan, um, and unfortunately we're just not able to take care of him, so he's at an assisted living facility until we can get better arrangements figured out. Um, so Dad, if you're watching this, hi, I love you, I miss you, Mwah. Um, but yeah, that's why, uh, you haven't really heard my dad in any videos or anything for quite some time. It's because he's not here. It's just me and mom. Um, but he's always with me, so. Uh, but yeah, just on top of just not being able to see friends or anyone, I was just like, I was just in the deep, deep depression uh, last year. So that brings us to this year, 2021. Um, I, again, didn't even have the energy to make the video last year. Um for obvious reasons. Then things kind of started to look up a little bit. Um, you know, the vaccines were rolling out, and I got mine, and Mom got hers. Dad got his. Oh, 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 no, I forgot about the big part. Um, January of 2021, um, I actually was kind of thinking about maybe trying to do something YouTube again, and then Dad got sick with COVID. Um, and you know, this year has been pretty rough when my dad getting sick with COVID is one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, that happened. I completely forgot about that and the whole host of other things that happened this year. Um, but that did happen. We were a little concerned for a while. Um, his oxygen levels were going up and down a bit, but in the grand scheme of things, before this was before the vaccines were available to everyone uh, and readily available. It was pretty still pretty strict at the time of, uh, January. Um, but he pulled through it all right. Um, no serious side effects, from what I could tell, other than one maybe little thing that we'll talk about later on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he got through that relatively fine, but boy did it scare the absolute H-E-double hockey sticks out of me. 
Um, that was a not fun experience. And again, to anyone who's had to go through this, I sympathize. Um, but yeah, he did much better. Um, and then, like I said, spring rolled around, vaccines were going out. Still had pretty rough depression, but it was easing up a little bit because I knew that, hey, the vaccines are here, you know, we're going to start maybe going back to normal here in a little bit, and things will maybe quiet down. Oh, you small, sweet summer child from spring. Uh, so that brings us into summer. <laughs> As the big one. So, in summer... Specifically June, the very start of June, uh, my mom got really, really sick. Just completely out of the blue. Now keep in mind at this point, we had gotten our COVID vaccines about two months prior. Maybe a month and a half. We got it at the end of April. She was sick at the beginning of June. They tested her. She didn't have COVID, but she did somehow develop pneumonia. So she was in the hospital for four days. She was sent in on Monday, came home Thursday night, and she came home on an oxygen machine and just all this other stuff, and it was just a lot to learn. But for the most part, she seemed to be doing better. Um, I mean, she still needed her oxygen to keep her levels where they should be. But for the most part, it just kind of seemed like, a, well, that was a thing that happened, and now we're getting through it, and now we should be done with it. And then, June, uh, I think it was 17th or 18th, whatever that Friday was. The Friday before Father's Day. I'm actually going to look that up real quick. I think it was, like, the 18th. Yeah, it was the 18th. Then June 18th happened. And she was just not doing so great the entire day, but I was just trying to be optimistic and being like, well, she's still fighting this thing, you know, let's give her some time and see what happens. Um, I went to wake her up for supper, and she was basically non-responsive. Uh, after a little bit of time, and by a little bit of time, I mean like 45 seconds, she did start responding to me, but she didn't understand a word I was saying. And at that point, I knew something wrong. Something, something's very, very wrong. So I called 911. We had the EMTs come in. Um, and they decided that they should probably get her looked at, considering she was just in the hospital for pneumonia. Um, I received a call from a doctor, and they just said that she was severely dehydrated, and I figured that was the end of it. Then I got one of the hardest phone calls of my life. Um, <laughs> so, I get a call around 2 in the morning. It's the 19th of June at this point, and the nurse on the other end of the phone is actually kind of frantic looking for information, um, just kind of being like, hey, what can you tell her about her and her case and all this? And I'm like, telling them what they need to know, but also trying to figure out what is going on here, because she hasn't actually responded to any of my texts at this point um, at all, and I just kind of assumed she was tired and fell asleep. Um, she was becoming extremely non-responsive to the doctors and the nurses, and they checked her blood work, and normally... Um, your blood oxygen levels are supposed to be balanced. Um, you're supposed to have good, balanced levels of oxygen versus carbon dioxide. You don't want too much of either or, otherwise you start having a big, big problem. Um, her case, however, she had way too much carbon dioxide in her bloodstream, and I'm talking a very lethal amount, um, to the point where some organs were actually starting to suffer damage and could have potentially started shutting down. Um, so we had to make a call on whether or not we wanted her on a ventilator and just all this other crazy stuff. And honestly, it's a blur. I was on the phone with the nurse and various other doctors for, God, I don't know, three hours? I think it was like five in the morning before I got sleep that night. <laughs> um, I had to make some terrifying calls that... I hope no one ever has to go through or make, but I know that mom is uh, not, a f she's scared of the ventilator, and frankly so am I, so we were like, well, let's try as much as we can and just hope for the best, and luckily she didn't have to go on a ventilator or anything, although if she got worse I would have given them permission, but like, I'm just so happy that she 
was okay. <laughs> but boy, was it a rough... Oh, God, I want to say 40 days, 50 days she was in the hospital. Um, she didn't come back to me until the beginning of August. Um, which was a very interesting experience for me, because I have never lived alone for any prolonged amount of time. I've been alone for, like, a couple of days, you know, but not even really, like, a week at most. Like, I'm used to just having someone around, a grandparent, parent, friend. But this was a whole new level. And then the Delta thing started happening, and I couldn't even really rally any friends together at any point to really keep me company, and it was rough. Dude, it was really bad. I'm not saying I had it worse than my mom did. My mom, God, she's such a trooper. Um, but it was it was scary. It was rough. Um, I had to make a lot of choices and decisions I didn't think I'd have to deal with for, I don't know, another 20 years? So that happened. And around that same time, insurance things happened. And I lost my therapist, so I didn't even have anyone professional to talk to, and I still haven't gotten that whole thing sorted out. It's just rough. <laughs> it's just really rough. Um, but luckily, like I said, at the start of August, um, through rigorous physical therapy and um, being on oxygen for quite some time and then slowly being weaned off of it, she was strong enough to finally come home, and I was super happy. It was a little bit of an adjustment at first, um, she was still pretty weak, uh, compared to where she was before she got sick, but, you know, you would be too, if you were on death's door and then had a 50-day stint in the hospital. Um, so, but we're just really, really thankful that she's still here, and I genuinely don't know where I'd be without her, because she is my rock. <laughs> all the qualities that you say that I have throughout the years, all the compliments you've given me, uh, whether it's my demeanor or, you know, the way I talk or the things I say or, you know, just people have said that I'm always like, you're always so kind and so sweet. Well, I get it from her. Um, that's not mine. That's, that's hers. <laughs> she gives it to me. And just, I almost lost that this year. And that's a little bit terrifying. But luckily, she's here and healthy and doing better. Um, she's still not back to where she was before the sickness. I don't even know what to call it, because it wasn't thing-related. It just happened. Um, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> then during that whole thing, my dad ended up in the hospital for a couple of days. Um, his blood pressure dropped like a rock, so he had to go on an ambulance trip and stay in the hospital for five days. July was a scary month. July is usually my favorite month because it's my birthday month and there's usually a lot of things to do and it's summer and it's usually just one of my favorite months uh, besides October, but good lord was July just bad this year. July, whew, I never want another month like that ever again. <laughs> it was just rough. Dad's doing okay now too. Um, uh, but yeah, I guess that pretty much, for the most part, brings us back to fall of this year. So mom's doing better. Dad's doing fine. Uh, Delta is running rampant, but we have not gotten it. Or at least my mom and I. Although we are being very vigilant at this point, considering she was in the hospital for breathing issues, and we do not want to like get the respiratory disease of the decade. <laughs> um, so basically we'd cut off all contact again. We're back in lockdown here and it's just frustrating. But you know, at least things are going better. And then September 17th happened. And September 17th was a not good day. <laughs> so I have this habit of not and this is totally on me, and I'm trying to get better about it, but I let things pile up until until it gets to the point where I just don't want to deal with it. And my computer is one of those things. And again, I'm trying to get better about it. I'm trying to get better about a lot of things in my life, because I realize a lot of the problems I have are my own doing. And this was one of them. 
But this was the day my hard drive died. <laughs> On top of that, back in 2014, I had a illness, we'll call it. Um, basically, for people that have a lot of surgeries like I did when I was a kid um, and when I was an infant, uh, unfortunately, there's a potential that a, let's call it a bridge, uh, a bridge can form between two organs, basically a little connector that should not be there because two organs should not be connected to each other. That's not really what you want, unless they're supposed to be, but like, it is a foreign connection that the body creates. And in 2014, this thing made me just really miserable and sick and it's elusive for some reason it the connection basically opens and closes at random so one day you'll have the signs of it and then the next day you could just be free of it for i don't know three weeks let's say three weeks or three days it's completely random um but yeah, if it's closed up at that time, they're not going to find it on a scan or anything. So, you know, it's an elusive little bugger. But eventually, in January of 2016, they found it. I had surgery in March of 2016, because surgery is pretty much the only way to fix this thing. And after 17 months of just absolute not funnery, <laughs> I was basically getting ready to get back on the mend. So, brings us back to September 17th. My computer's dead, I'm upset. Then, I notice something is wrong with myself, not just my computer. And it's a symptom of that illness rearing its ugly head again. And I just lost it. So, I thought I had put that all behind me five years ago, going on six years now. Um, I was told by the doctors that the odds of it happening again were extraordinarily slim. But unfortunately, I'm here to report that it is happening again. <laughs> so, yeah, that's been a thing I've been living with now since, like I said, I think I said September 17th. Um, it's showing no signs of going away. And it is showing all the signs of being just as elusive as the other one was. Um, which is really frustrating, because I do not want to have to go through another 17 months before they can track this thing down. But you do what you gotta do. Unfortunately, this time around, it is a lot more painful. Um, the one from 2014, it was not pleasant to deal with, but it didn't cause me any pain. It caused a lot of imbalances in my body, which would cause me to get sick pretty easily. But I was never in chronic pain. This one? I'm actually in pain right now. <laughs> talking. Um, like, not to, not to talk and cause the pain. I mean, like, just in general. Like, it's just a constant dull ache. And it's like, seriously, dude? So, I actually had a scan on Monday to try to find it heard from the doctor this week it was not shown because i knew it wouldn't be because like i said it opens and closes at random and i hadn't seen any signs of it existing in the better part of a week and a half and i was like yep it's gonna wait until after the test and lo and behold that's exactly what happened and i'm just a little irritated but that's okay so that brings us to today and that brings us going into 2022 um I've been surprisingly active recently. I didn't really think I would be. When this whole thing came up, I was like, well, that's the nail in the coffin for my online presence. Like, I've already come to terms with the fact that this will probably never be a career choice for me, and that's fine. Also, I had to come to terms with that apparently a lot of disabled people get screwed when they have, let's just call it assistance, because you can only make so much money a month, and that's fine. Note the sarcasm and anger in my voice. So YouTube was never really going to be anything profitable for me anyway, but at least it could be a hobby and an escape. But sometimes I just really don't have the energy 
to put into it. To be entertaining, to be lively, to be optimistic. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously. Um, so that's where the live streams have come in. Because um, with YouTube, I kind of feel like I have to constantly be doing something, constantly be saying something. With live streams, on the other hand, I feel like I can be a little more lax um, with my attitude and like just how I present myself. Uh, which is weird, because you think it would be the complete opposite, and apparently it should be. Um, apparently you should take the exact same mentality with YouTube into streaming, but that's not how I've approached it. Um, but I will admit, streaming lately has been really tiring as well. Um, in fact, there was a whole year break um, from August of 2020 to November of this year, where I didn't stream at all, because I just did not have the mental energy. Um, and then, like I said, everything <laughs> that I've talked about prior in this video happened, and it was just like, oh boy. So, but it wasn't until, like, the fall that I was like, I need to stream. I need to feel like I'm doing something, or I'm gonna go insane. <laughs> so that's kind of where we're at with streams right now. We actually just finished up um, my first playthrough of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond which is a playlist that you can find on the channel. Any and all streams that I have done have been uploaded to my second channel on uh, Lightning VODs or whatever the heck it's called. Um, you can find it in my list of uh, channels. Uh, if you go to my channel, there's going to be like a channels tab, and then you can see it. It's like the first one. Um, if you go to my playlists, um, anything labeled like live stream archive, um, that's something that you probably haven't seen before, because those videos get astronomically low views, and I'm not really in it for the views, I'm just like, oh wow, okay, this thing really flies under the radar. Not that I've ever really done a great job of advertising myself, but I just want people to know that, hey, these are there, and they are actually some projects that I have been asked to tackle for years now. Like, back in 2018 and 2019, we um, did Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, granted, it wasn't with Christian Cosplayer and myself, you know, doing a dual commentary playthrough like everyone asked, but until that day comes, or if that day even comes, hopefully that can hold you over slash be the de facto playthrough if we never get around to it, because I don't know when things are getting back to normal to even have that discussion. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. So there's probably a lot of playthroughs, a lot of lightning that maybe you've missed. And, um, as far as what the future looks like, honestly, guys, it depends. It depends on my doctors and stuff, what they tell me. Um, it depends on my energy levels. It depends on my pain levels. Um, right now I have a nice, warm, cozy, heated blanket to try to ease some of the aches. But sometimes that works, and sometimes it just, nope, nothing, nothing works that day, so. Um, and of course it depends on just depression. Like, I'm not even gonna hide it. Like, I don't know why it has a stigma about it. Like, I'm just gonna be open. I have depression. I have anxiety. It's pretty bad. I definitely need to see someone about it, because I lost my therapist over the summer. That is my number one goal for next year, besides fixing this medical issue, is uh, getting back into therapy, trying to fix these things that I don't like about myself as much anymore, and to hopefully in the process be a little more open to doing more stuff here on YouTube. I mean, I have some ideas. Um, I don't want to go into any of them right now because I'm tired of making promises. I've done this going on, what, 12 years now? And 2010 was amazing, and 2011 I think was my best year on the channel, but after that, then I started getting these chronic illnesses starting in 2012, and just... I still get asked, like, where's Skyward Sword? Where's Pokemon Emerald? Oh, you promised you were going to do this and that, and I can't blame people for asking. I'd be curious, too. I'd be like, it's been eight, nine, ten years. You know, six, seven, eight, wh whatever. Like, how many years? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I just, I feel bad, because I feel like I've disappointed people, and I don't want to keep doing that. So I'm going to keep any and all plans that I have under my hat. Um, because I don't know if any will pan out. I don't even know if there's really an audience for Let's Plays like there used to be anymore. Um, but one advantage I do have that unfortunately other creators don't have because it's their job and they have to follow the algorithm because YouTube is a soul-crushing place that can't allow you to actually be creative. 
But one <laughs> one advantage I do have is that I can do whatever I want. This is not my job, it is my hobby. Um, until disability rights change, or things in my life change, I am not even allowed to make such and such amount of money a month, unless I lose all of my benefits, and then my family's really screwed. So, I can experiment. I can afford to take chances. I can afford to take risks. Yeah, it would be nice to make some cash on the side, but... And that's why I'm just not really going to put all of my energy into YouTube and Twitch as much as I used to, because it's not a monetary source for me. It was for a little bit, got into some trouble with the powers that be, I had to make a whole retirement video out of it. Yes, I know in my retirement video I was like, oh, it's because my parents have been sick, and that part was true, but at the time I wasn't really allowed to elaborate on anything else. Um, I might not still be able to, but you know what? Screw it at this point. I'm so tired of people dictating how other people should live. And how much you're allowed to make and how much and what you're allowed to do just because you have a disability. And I'm just, I'm tired of so much. And it's not even just being disabled. It's so many other communities out there that face so many other problems. And I'm just, I'm tired of seeing it. We are all people. We should all be treated like people allowed to love allowed to live <laughs> and unfortunately that's just not the world we live in but i will say this on that topic whoever you are you are safe here i will always try to make my content a safe place for people to hang out and just be who they are and who they want to be unless that is something that is actively harmful to other people that i will not stand but if you just want to come here and just geek out about Pokemon, we can do that. If you want to confess your love for Minecraft, like you can do that too. Like you can talk about so many things here. And I think that's the kind of community I want to foster. I want to foster a community that lives and loves and is... I'm not going to say, like, positive, because there is such a thing as toxic positivity, but realistic. Positive when there's positivity. When positivity is necessary for the situation, and realistic, and maybe sometimes even a little negative, if they need to be. So, there's no judgment here. No time for that. Life's too short. So... And you never know what's going to be around the corner. <sighs> God, this has been a long video, and I'm just going on and on. So yeah, um, I guess that's everything I have to say. I don't know what I'm doing as far as YouTube is concerned, or as far as the future is concerned. A lot of that depends on my health and all that. We do have a Discord, albeit I have not had a hugely active presence on there due to everything I've talked about. Not that I'm using that as an excuse, but it definitely is a factor. Um, I admit I need to be more active on my own Discord server, but if you're not a part of our community and would like to be, I'm sure there will be a link down there below. I also have a Twitter where I post a lot more frequently than I do here, so um, just kind of get updates on what I'm doing, how I'm feeling. I pretty much have no holds barred on Twitter because, again, I'm small. <laughs> I don't really have an image I need to care about, so... I can be pretty real, so, which is sometimes good and sometimes bad, and I dropped something, what did I drop? I think that was a book. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Uh, so, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, your continued participation with my stuff. Um, I don't think I ever finished the story, by the way, about the computer. Uh, it took about a week to get it fixed. It's fixed. Um, I had to wipe the hard drive, though, so everything I had is gone. All my, all my Minecraft worlds are gone, man. But no, um, it's unfortunate. But yeah, we did, we actually did lose the one from the YouTube series, so. That's my fault for not backing things up and letting it build up until it was like, eh, what's the point of backing anything up? It'll be fine, and then, oh no, hard drive dead. <laughs> so. Alrighty, guys, I've rambled on long enough, and I can tell I'm rambling, so. Thank you so much for watching, or listening, whatever. 
I hope you had a wonderful holiday. I hope that all of your days here forward are cherished and wonderful and merry. And I hope you had a good holiday. And I hope that we, as a collective, have a good year going forward. Thanks so much, everyone. I will see you soon. Hopefully with something a little less rambly and a little less depressing than this update. Um, I, I, sorry if I bummed anyone out. I'm trying to work on that. Sometimes I think I talk too much about this kind of stuff. But anyway, <laughs> all right, for real though, I'm going to shut up, let you get back to your holiday. Hope you have a wonderful one, and I will see you next time, whenever that may be. Take care. Oh, and uh, my live stream is also down in the description below. Um, I don't have a schedule for that because of, again, the medical issues. Some days I feel like it, some days I don't. It's in the description. Uh, just follow me. Follow Twitter. I make notifications and posts and all that crap when I'm going live. So, okay, for real time. Bye-bye. Uh, Take care. Love you. You're valid. You're awesome. Thank you. Bye.